Part A wants you to estimate the mean, median, and mode for both graphs. Now you could figure it out exactly by just looking at the numbers. So the number 4 occurs 4 times, 5 occurs 3 times, 6 occurs twice in the data, 7 occurs 5 times in the data. Writing all that out, 4, 4 times, 5, 3 times, and so on, you can see the mode right away. 7 is listed 5 times, that's more than any other, so the mode is 7. You can see the median. I've highlighted it right, right here. There's 23 total numbers, so the median would be this 12th number right here, right in the middle. And it's also 7. And you can find the mean. You could add all of these up and divide by 23. You would also get 7. So you could do that for both histograms. The one on the right will also be 7, 7, and 7. Now you can get that just by looking at them. The mode should stand out to you. The tallest the tallest bar is occurring the most often. It's the most frequent. That's why it's the tallest. So seven's the mode. It should also, because it's symmetrical on both sides, it should stand out to you that seven is in the middle. It's the median. There's the same uh, amount of data on both sides. So seven's going to be in the middle. And then if you think of the mean, you're going to add everything up and divide by how many data entries there are but 8 is 1 bigger than 7, and 6 is 1 less than 7. So if you think, and there's the same number of 8s as there are 6s, so the 8s and 6s will all average out to 7. 9 is 2 more than 7, 5 is 2 less, there's the same number of 5s and 9s, so those will average out to 7, and so on. The data is the same on both sides, so the bigger part and the smaller part is going to average out to right in the middle to 7. And that's the same as on this chart. It's clearly the mode because it's the tallest, 7 is. It's also clearly in the middle, so it's the median. And then the same amount of data is on the left as on the right, so when you add that, the sum, uh, the smaller and the bigger, will average out to the middle of 7. Which distribution has a larger standard deviation? That's going to be this first one because more of the data is spread out farther away from the mean. So we've got these big chunks of data all the way out here at 10 and at 4. And so when data is farther away, the standard deviation is larger. Here our bigger chunks of data are close to 7, so the standard deviation will be smaller. You can type the data values from number 4 into Excel. And then if you go to the Data tab and Data Analysis, there should be descriptive statistics. Hit OK. And make sure your input range, put your cursor in there and highlight your data. So A2 through A9. And then your output range, you can make it in a new worksheet if you wanted, but I just want it, make sure your cursor is there. I just want it right next to my data. So I'm just going to click there and it'll say C2. And again, all of this is explained in Chapter 3 of the Excel Guide, so please read that. It's only a couple pages long. It talks about a lot of very useful uh, operations in Excel that we'll use throughout the quarter. So please read Chapter 3. It'll take you five minutes if you haven't done it yet. Uh, make sure Summary Statistics is clicked, and if you hit OK, you get a lot of great information generated right, as well, or right away. So for this problem, you have the mean given to you. Meeting and mode. Mode should be the one you could have figured out on your own really quick. 1.9 happens twice, which is more than anything else. Standard deviations given to you right away. And the range. The one thing we have to figure out is the coefficient of variation. Now on page 100, it has the formula here for you. You're going to take the standard deviation for your sample and divide by the sample mean. And convert that to a percentage by multiplying by 100%. So let's look at that. So right over here, your uh, coefficient of variation, and then you want to do the D8, which is standard deviation, divided by D4, which is the mean. Now when you hit that, you get 0.5438. Now you can multiply by 100 to make it a percent, or Excel if you just hit the percent button Let's try to get a couple decimals of accuracy. So we'll have 54.39% is the coefficient of variation. 
and that's just measuring what percentage of the mean is the standard deviation. So the standard deviation of 2.4 is 54.39% of the mean. The coefficient of variation is really nice because it removes all the units from it. So if one statistic or study used feet, something else used inches, something else used meters, you could have really different readings for mean and standard deviation, but if you really want to compare all the different data and how spread out it was, uh, what, what are the ratios of standard deviations to means, convert everything to a coefficient of variation, figure that out for all your different data, and then you, you no longer have inches and, and feet and meters, you just have this nice number to compare what percentage of the mean is the standard deviation. So this helps you compare data no matter what it's measured in, no matter what the units are. Number six wants you to find some weighted averages. This can be a very useful tool while you're in school to figure out what your grade is going to be for a given course. But see what I did here is just use Excel to type in the grades for the different assignments and then I put the weights of each assignment in the next category or in the next column and then the weighted grade the formula is just take the grade and multiply by whatever its weight was and so you get your weighted grades and if you remember the formula for figuring out a weighted average it was take all your numbers all your grades in this case X multiply by their weights so grade times the weights, add them up. This symbol means add, them all, add all those things up. And so here you're taking, you're dividing by all your weights. And this symbol again means add them all up. So on bottom you're going to divide by all the weights added up. So each grade multiplied by its weight is what we have here. And that symbol mean, meant add them all up. So we got 85.77s on top. And they're supposed to divide by all the weights added up. Well, the weights all add up to 1. So we just divide by 1. It's not going to change the value. So that student would have an 85.77. And then Part B says uh, they had a score of only 20 on attendance. So you may think uh, attendance grade dropping from 92 all the way down to 20 is going to have a large effect on the grade. Let's see what happens. It affects it some, but only 3% because the weight on attendance is so small that it only affected it 3%. Now this wasn't the problem, but let's see what would happen if our final exam dropped all the way down to 20. Our grade dropped significantly because the final exam is weighted so much more, it's so much more important than the attendance was. So that's number six.